sweet. <laughs> All right, there we go. Always. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and I have again with me. His real name is Marty Lawson because I butchered that absolutely miserably the last live stream we did. And what's really cool is we're really going to get into different fisheries. You know, fishing the DMV, it's not just about around Northern Virginia. It's all the states that really encompass the greater Washington area. And believe it or not, like down near Lake Anna in Fredericksburg, there's a lot of people that live there that do commute and work in D.C. and Quantico. So we get to actually hit a lot of these fisheries that I don't even know about until I started doing YouTube and these live streams. So, yeah, Marty, yeah, take take it away. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. And thanks for having me on the show. Um, yeah. One of the things that I like to focus on is the local areas around here. And a lot of people do not know it. Um, there's there are five to six primary reservoirs in this area. And I, I'm going to I'm going to run through them real quick. There's Hunting Run and Nye Reservoir that are in in Spotsylvania County. There is. Um, yeah, there's Lake Abel and Lake Mooney up in Stafford. There is Lake Orange out in Orange County, which is like a 35 to 45 minute drive from for me to get out there. That that's a great fishery out there. Um, so there's Curtis Lake, which is another one. There is Lake of the Woods. Uh, Lake of the Woods, you need a special permit because it's an HOA society. Um, Lake Curtis used to be a great fishery, but then, uh, yeah, the, the Department of Virginia Fisheries stocked it, let everyone know, and everyone went in there, went in there and caught all kinds of fish and took them home, and mm. fishery is not that good anymore. Um, but I'll tell you, the toughest one out of, out of the group here is Lake Abel. It's hmm. extremely long, and if you're running a trolling motor only, if you want to go from one end to the other and back from the landing, you better have two batteries. It's extremely long. It's very deep. It's very steep-sided. So, you know, if you want to go to Abel, I would recommend you make a trip there with your electronics and go and find your spots first. Okay. Uh, do some tooling around there because it's not an easy place to fish. There are some some rock just walls that just come straight down the bank and drop into 40 feet of water. Jeez. Um, so that one's big fish, but it's really hard to fish. So um, how many uh, lakes are around you, you think, within, I don't know, less than 30-minute driving distance or around 30 minutes just from where you live in that area? Um, four to five. That's pretty and, good. <laughs> and then that doesn't even include the Rappahannock River where oh, yeah. uh, you can fish, you know, the city of Fredericksburg and below you can put in it. There's all kinds of places you can put in on the Rappahannock that are within 30 minutes of May. And you can fish the, the slower moving water for largemouth, uh, plenty of catfish, yellow perch, the, the, uh, you know, what do you call them? The, not, not smell is oh whatever. shad yeah the shad are running right know. now and then if you go above the city of fredericksburg and you get into that fast water that you can actually see when you go over the 95 bridge um you catch smallmouth up there all day long we're gonna be we're gonna talk about that after the broadcast because i definitely yeah. got my summer schedule kind of figured out now and i definitely want to make 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 some plans to come out there and do that that just sounds so cool to wade the rap oh, yeah. it's well, I'll tell you what, it's waiting and it is, it's not easy work. You know, I always carry a walking stick with me because. Smart. You know, yeah. You, you, you really have to, if you just go out there without some other stability, you're mm -hmm. going to be down a lot. And I don't wear waders. I just, you know, wear jeans or shorts and get out there in the water. So um, yeah. I would recommend jeans because the vegetation that grows up mm -hmm. is blackberries and all that type of stuff you tear yourself up but yeah, yeah. Fish fishhawk suggests to us um and you guys go watch that it's a really cool episode uh the fishhawk interview about getting wading shoes and he really convinced me it's like if you want to wait a lot guys like go get wading shoes because apparently you can get studs and stuff for them 
uh, and different grippy things just so you make sure you have good grip and ankle support. So that's something I'm actually, because I want to do a lot more wade fishing and maybe get waders. I'm, I'm, I'm debating that. I'm going to try to get, get prep for that because yeah, he's right. Like you can slip very easily wading if you're not careful. Yeah. I, I, the other recommendation I would make to you is get them above the ankle mm. because you know, a lot of wading shoes look like sneakers. And I'll tell you, if you start slipping and you're you're trying to regain your footing, you will pop that ankle in a heartbeat. So mm. yeah, I use uh I use a you know the high top Merrill boot. Ah, okay. And I use those and I do pretty good on that. Still, depending on the time of the year and what kind of algae is blooming at the time will really determine how well you can wade and how much you're gonna be slipping and sliding all over the place you know um and of course the water depth is another thing you have to watch so yeah we'll talk about that later but uh yeah so let's get back into the local stuff local stuff so let's get into the lake so lake number one let me uh get this get, get this up here and add this to the old stream let's uh hold on a second there we go Perfect. There we go. So I guess the first one up is a uh, hunting run reservoir. So yeah, you want to give uh, the viewers at home just a little back history on this place? So I'm not exactly sure when this place was built, but um, you know, from what I've heard, there was some, some local ponds in the area. It gets, it gets its water source from the Rappahannock. So people have caught smallmouth bass out of here. Wow. So, you know, it's 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 a really special place. There's great bass fishing, but you have to really work in here to find the, the really good spots. Um, if you scroll down a little bit to where the landing is, uh, other direction. Nope. The landing is at the opposite end. Right here. There you go, right there. So there's where you, there's where you put in is uh is right there that hunting run reservoir so that's where you put in but if you know as, as you zoom in that you see where the structure actually is and where those where those those banks are for when they start you know when they start getting on the beds and stuff um and the majority of the time what we do is we put in the, from the landing there and we head north towards the dam okay okay it's very interesting that the boat ramp is that far away wow it is and then so what what are you you primarily targeting i guess largemouth then like what kind of size is in here oh <laughs> is it quantity um, versus quality or no well it's honestly it's both I, i've gone in there and caught 22 bass in three hours and the biggest one was maybe two pounds other days I've gone in there and caught eight bass and the biggest one is almost five pounds. Wow. Um, I know there have been 10 pounders, nine pounders, seven pounders consistently caught out of this place. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a great fishery, but, um, you know, it's, it's only open a certain time of the year. It's only open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can't get there super early because there's a gate. So there's a gentleman that opens a gate and you have to buy a pass and things like that. Now I, I buy a pass for the year and it covers hunting run and Nye reservoir. So I pay one price and, and that's it for the, for the boat launch and everything. So that's what I do because I fish these a lot and, uh, as you're, as you're looking at this map, you see this long finger on the, on the left that's just sticking out there. Um, you know, that, that's, that's prime because on this, uh, the, the real long one on the, on that bottom there. Oh, right here. Let's see. Nope. Go a little north. That long finger that sticks out. This one here or this one to the right. My right. Nope. Your left. My left. Okay, cool. Right here, gotcha. Yeah, see that, see that long piece of land that comes out. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, it's it runs. Yeah, uh, go 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 to the southern one, that other southern finger that sticks out of land. That one. 
Yep. So when you zoom in on that and you look at the typographic topographic map there, that's prime breeding ground right there. Mm -hmm. Because it runs off the main lake channel. So the bass are sitting in there. They start moving up. There's plenty of points, plenty of humps in there. And then, you know, they start moving shallow, it, you know, to get on those beds. And that is just, it's beautiful right there. It really is. It's its a great place to, to start off. What's the primary cover in this place? Is there grass? Is it just wood? Is it nothing? Um, or is it I would say it's... It's mostly wood, a lot of sticks sticking up and things like that um, for right now. And then the grass comes in and it gets, you get some decent grass lines. Okay. Uh, that extend maybe 12 to 14 feet off the bank and come up to just maybe a foot underwater will be the top of the grass. So, you know, you start throwing stuff in there, you know, Texas rig, things like that in that grass. And as you're pulling it out of that grass, that's when you get get smacked a lot of times. Um, and, and right now, with the bass feeding up, any of these points are just, they're working. Um, as long as you can handle the wind and the temperature lately, you can get out there and really, really have a, a blast. The other thing it seems like this place is pretty deep too. There's some good depth on this place. Is there shad yeah. in there? Uh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah. In the summertime, it gets crazy. You're, you're, you're moving along and just going through these coves and all of a sudden you just see the bass just blasting on, on shad on the top. Um, there's another time last year I was sitting in one of these little coves and I saw something that was, I've never seen in my life. And I actually stood up in my boat and looked around. And in this one cove, I swear there had to be 300 12 to 14 inch bass just circling around in this cove. Wow. Um, and I mean, they were just going in a big circle around my boat. Uh, and I'm just watching them. <laughs> and, you know, you throw out a little swim jig and keep it close to the top and they were they were killing it. So yeah, they were just they were just searching for shad. And I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen that many bass in one spot ever. Mm. Um, but and yeah, it, and it probably doesn't get pressured much too. If you're only open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like that's that's crazy. Now who owns it then? Is it Fish and Game there or the Department yeah, of Wildlife Resources? Okay. It's Fish and Game and it's run by uh, Spotsylvania County. Okay, interesting. So does it have like a closed date? Uh, there's a couple lakes around us where it's like it's shut down from like November to March that you can't fish it at all. Same thing here. Same okay. thing as we run. Okay, yeah. interesting. Uh, it is it is closed starting in, I think it's right around the, the maybe the beginning of November um, through March. And then like in March, it only opens up on Saturday and Sunday. Hmm. So coming weekend or this coming week well no not even uh it'll be next next week it, is, it starts opening thursday friday saturday and sunday okay this is the last weekend where it's just open saturday and sunday gotcha well that that's got to be guys you need to put this as a destination to try to hit this year because that sounds like there's not a lot of pressure comparatively speaking and the other thing too is like with these bigger reservoirs I just don't know. I haven't fished a lot of electric motor only lakes, but it doesn't seem these bigger ones will get the same pressure just because you can't move around as quickly. Um, you know, is that kind of right? Like how, how much pressure does a place like this actually get? Well, I mean, opening weekend, there was about 40 boats out there. Okay. Uh, and then it, and then it kind of, it slows down, you know, not as many boats out there. Now, a lot of times, it's, it's also used for recreation. So people are out there on paddle boards and kayaks and just tooling around doing stuff. So I would say on a nice weekend, because they also rent John boats and trolling motors there. Mm. So I would say on a nice weekend, uh, you're probably going to get 30, 30 to 40 boats out there fishing. Oh, wow. But um, other times, you know, if you go on a Thursday, a lot of people work. So if you can go like on a Thursday or Friday, obviously the number of boats out there is much less. Okay. 
So when, when do they usually try to start spawning? Is it, is it early April, late April? Is, is there really a cue that you're looking for on this particular body of water? Uh, <laughs> yeah, my cue got blown out of the water this year. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I read a very interesting article, and I'll have to, I'll have to send it to you so that, so that you can provide it to your readers. And it's really something that, this one gentleman said, you need to pay attention to everything around you. Mm. So if you catch a decent fish, you should stop and look around at the bank and notice, you know, where are the buds at on the trees and, and what kind of stuff is growing on the shore and what's growing in the water and what's your temperature like? You know, we're still sitting at 53, 54 degrees. And I, I, I'm really waiting for it to get into that you know, 59 to 60 degrees when they're really going to start eating a lot before they spawn. So normally I would say this would be the time that they'd be moving up to spawn, but the water's just been so cold, especially with these cold nights. Mm -hmm. um, the pressure's still staying, you know, at that, at 53, 54 degrees. Now they move up when the sun comes out, you have that Southern wind and and things like that. So you have to play that uh, that cycle. Look at which way the wind is blowing, and then fish those wind blown banks. And if you can get, you know, a southern wind and fish a northern bank when the sun comes out, it's warming up that water a little bit more, and the fish are more active. That's what I'm seeing, anyways. Um, you know, so I would say between now and the time it gets to like. 63, 64 degrees is the best time to get out there and hit these places. Um, you know, one of the things in that article, and, and there's a lot of these trees in, in Virginia, and it's that uh, they're called like Japanese magnolias. It's those short trees with the pink flowers on them, the big pink flowers. When the pink flowers start budding. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's that because the guy said, yeah, he caught his. He had a great day, and when he got home, he looked at the tree, and those buds were all pink. Well, wow. unfortunately for us this year, I I had pink buds one day, and the next day I walked out, and they were all brown because they got killed by the frost. So I'm like, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> I, I still think that is so cool, though, that with our modern technology, some of those old school, like that woodsman hunting stuff, it just it still freaking works, and it's almost better. It, it does. The other thing... The other thing is in the article, it said, you know, all nature is related. And as things happen in our environment and things like that, the, the animals take advantage of it. And one of the other things and I've really been watching this this year is the, the ruby throated hummingbird migration map. Hmm. Now, you can just go on Google and type in hummingbird migration map 2022. And it actually brings up a site with a map. And as people spot these hummingbirds in their area, they put it put it on the site, the date and the time in which they've seen them. And you actually move, see them move up through the country on the eastern shore, on the eastern coast. And just last week, they spotted them in Richmond hmm. and a couple up in Arlington. So they're moving up, which means, you know, they're not going to come up when it's cold. Mm -hmm. so now the weather's getting better. So that's just another indicator that you can use to figure out when these bass are going to start spawning. So, you know, the guy said, if you see a hummingbird and those and those pink flowers on a tree, you better be out in a boat fishing. You know, um, I'm into that. Yeah. So really, when you're fishing and you catch some fish and you find some, take the time to look around, see what's going on in, in the environment and either put it in your phone or make a mental note of it. Um, it, it it's definitely a, will benefit you the following year. And you might say, well, I'm not going to worry about it now. I'll worry about that next year. Well, don't worry about it next year. Take note of it this year and it will make you a better fisherman next year. Um, Amen to that. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I, I tell you, hunting run is a great place. I love it. I fish it all the time. Um, 
Give us a couple of just generic areas. Would that be considered your best area just for someone to get out there and go just to like really hit, hit as many main lake points as possible, uh, go, go towards the dam versus going up or staying around the boat launch area? Yeah, I, I would recommend going towards a dam. Okay. Um, it's a bit of a ride. Now, you know, if you're in a boat and you're doing three miles per hour with a trolling motor, it takes a little while to get there. But I've seen some really big bass caught on the left side of the dam. Um, I know there's been nine and ten pounders pulled out of there. Yep, up in that area. And now, do, do all these houses have like boat launch? Because I saw like there's a boat ramp like, you know, right right here. Um, is this a public boat ramp that's right out here? Is it private? Or all it, these houses have boat ramps? No, they don't. It's a okay. reservoir, so they don't have boat ramps. They don't have okay. piers in the water. Oh, ah, okay. So no, no dock fishing. None of that type of structure. Huh. There's no docks at all. Wow. Okay. So, you know, these people might have a canoe or a kayak sitting on the bank that they can put in the water, but really there's, you can't just put in anywhere because it is private property. Gotcha. 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 And then, so this time of year, give us like top three baits for, for Huntington. How would you approach this place? So top three baits in hunting run right now, I'm going to tell you spinner baits when it's windy, because we have a lot of windy conditions right now. Um, I would recommend the double Colorado blade because you can really slow roll that. And if that wind's blowing, there's nothing better than a spinner bait out there, just slow rolling it through the branches and, and, and stuff that you see sticking up. That's, that's a great bait to use. Obviously chatter bait is another one that you can use same type of production. Um, just, slow roll that thing you cast it out and let it hit the bottom and then just roll very slow okay um so that you can keep it down in that five to seven foot area coming off the bank that's where you want it um the other thing i've been catching a lot of them on is a drop shot a drop shot is very versatile it's a slow finesse technique a lot of people don't like that um you know, it's, it's, it, for me, I, I'm going out there with, I have my spinner bait tied on. I have a chatter bait tied on. I have drop shot. I have Ned rig and, you know, I'll throw in uh, Texas rig and, um, you know, shaky head just looking at that. But I would say my top three are going to be uh, shaky head drop shot and spinner bait. Okay. Yeah. Um, that that seems I've about been, right for this time of I've year. I've been throwing crankbaits. I've been throwing lipless. And I'm just not getting it yet because I don't think the grass is high enough. Once that grass comes up a little more, I I think they'll start really going after your after your crankbaits and stuff. But right now, you fish a crankbait and you want to bump that thing on the bottom, you're just going to pull up nothing but that muck, that slime right now. Um, because the grass hasn't grown up high enough. Mm -hmm. Got to let the grass grow a little bit. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's that's hunting run in a nutshell. You can have a blast there. And just fishing the shoreline, there's so much stuff that you can find that's just sticks and stumps and things like that. Y you can have a blast. Now, you can get snagged up a lot, too. <laughs> um Make but sure that seems really it. cool, like um, just having like, I don't know, not having the the human factor there. Where like if, if you go up to like Frederick and Front Royal and now you have houses built within three feet of the water. This looks very just like the way it's been for 50, 60 years with keeping all the stuff in the water, not not completely, you know, field cutting everything away from it. Um, it I definitely am going to try to get out there this year because that looks really, really cool. Yeah, now, it, it's a oh, lot of fun. Now, uh, the two more before we switch switch off to this is uh, how long is it, and is there a is there a, a a limit on speed like a five mile hour speed limit or whatever with an electric motor? Because I know people get souped up motors now. And the last one is what type of vegetation do you think is in there? Is it hydrilla? Is it milfoil? I will tell you it in this one it is hydrilla mostly. Okay. There is no speed restrictions on this. If you have a trolling motor in that can get you going and it's electric, you're good. So yeah, I've seen some of those really nice trolling motors that oh, look yeah. 
they they look like a little three or four horsepower engine on the back of these boats. Um, it, it's insane because isn't I think down in um, the Norfolk area there's like a electric motor only tournament trail. I think there's one down near you guys that's like that. Actually, I fish one myself, and that's um, Outcast Bass Club of Virginia. It's a it's a E series. Okay. Um, that's the one that I'm going to be fishing, uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend uh, off the Potomac at Aquia Harbor. Oh, wow. I fished the one that I fished down in Lake Chesden that I came in for my buddy and I came in fourth place. That's electric only. So, that is really gaining popularity. Yeah, it really is. Um, you're looking for Chesden? Yeah. Let's see, wrap yeah, panic here. Go down, you got to go down a lot further. It's south of Richmond. Oh, south of Richmond. Okay. I thought, we're, is this, what, which lake is this? Is this Moomaw? Okay. Rocky Pen Reservoir Lake Mooney is that one. But Chesden is quite a ways down. Did you want to do Chesden next or Mooney? No, we'll do Mooney. Okay. Chesden is Chesden's an hour and 40 minutes from me. Okay, so we'll start with this one then. I got yep. this up here. Wow. Very different. <laughs> yeah. That's what's so cool about down this way is there's so many different fisheries and they're all unique. It's not like all three are carbon copies. Like it looks like at least from the mapping structure wise how they set up they're just very different they are there's so this one here the boat landing is closer to the dam so where is, it, is this one right down here in the corner yeah yep so you know hunting run you're on the opposite end of the dam and this one here you're right next to the dam mm -hmm. um and this is open every day okay there's no gate there so you can put in early and and fish however long um it is electric only um the other thing about this is that if you zoom in on that landing a little bit there's there's hydrilla in this place that is just it grows like crazy especially in this cove where this uh boat ramp is they just extended the boat ramp and, and built this up a little bit but last year, oh, you can see it. Yeah. Last year, late in the year, last year, a lot of guys with John boats couldn't even put in there. Really? Yeah. They couldn't get in the water because it was so, the water level dropped probably six to seven feet. Wow. There was no concrete left on the boat ramp. And the, the hydrilla was growing so much that, Unless you had a kayak or a boat like mine, you were not getting in there. I, I, the frog fishing must be insane <laughs> in the summertime. It is. It is. Frogs and whopper ploppers are, are your keys here. But I'll tell you what I love to do at this place. These weed lines, as you move out of this cove and you move north, there's, there's places in here that you you can see that weed line and it's so defined mm -hmm. there's places where it's 12 feet off the bank there's places where you can go into some of these coves that are just inundated with weeds but if you stand up and look and you got good glasses on you can see those holes mm -hmm. in the weeds drop shot for me drop shot is king in this place when the vegetation grows because you can go into these little holes and in, into these little coves that are just inundated with weeds and find those pockets. And if you just cast your drop shot and let it go into that hole, they come out and grab it with a quickness. Yeah, it's, it's so weird to me. So many people that don't grow up on grass are terrified of fishing it. And to me, when I see grass and fishery, I, first off, I know that place is extremely healthy because you're going to have tons of bait, tons of bluegill, um, and you're going to have big ones that just can't be accessed. But it, it's honestly, once you find the the juice on a grass place, you can get rich real quick. I mean, yeah. it, it's insane how they can stack up in just one little area. Exactly. It's it's. Uh, I I know some areas on this place that I'll go and just park my boat, and I will cast to the left and to the right along this shoreline, and the, where those where that weed line is, and it is incredible. I'm talking, you know, I've gone out there and caught 
two two pounders to to five pounders oh. all day long. Ah, you're getting me, you're getting me jazzed all day oh. long in this space when that when those weeds come up because you can just you know you, you take either a shaky head or a drop shot. You cast mm. in that weed, you pop it out of the weeds, and let it sit, and it. The weeds are just the perfect cover. There's plenty of oxygen and there's there's shade and there's cover. And mm -hmm. you drop something off that weed line and they will just kill it. Yeah. And it's it, a lot of fun. It's it's so much fun. And I already know some questions that are going to be asked in the comment section of this video. We are going to do a grass fishing seminar, but up here there is no grass. So once there is grass that actually grows up, we'll do an on the water thing about it. Because guys, it's really, it is really, really cool. Because I think when you grow up fishing just a dock, and you see the structure you want to you want to power fish quicker and you see this with a lot of guys that fish in arkansas and, and you know uh those lakes out there where it's very specific things that you're targeting and you go to the next one if you look at florida anglers they fish slow and they fish very simple stuff i mean that's where the senko honestly got really famous was in florida because once you find an area you you drop anchor you power pull down and you comb it through there because you can have uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of fish in the area the size of your front lawn. That's how many can be held in an area. So if you catch the best thing is if you catch one grass, you got to either waypoint it, take a picture, remember where that is because there's not just one in grass. You can just have one on a dock sometimes or one on a stump, but grass it's very rare that there's just one, two or three pounder just in the middle of nowhere in the grass, and there's nothing else there. There's a reason he's there. Yeah, um, and that's why I said there's times that I'll just park my boat. And I have a little anchor. I'll drop an anchor and I will fish, you know, I'll cast down the left side of the bank. If I pull it out there, okay, I got that one. Now I'll, I'll go to the right side and I'll fish that. If I catch one there, once I catch one there, then I'll switch back over. Cause there are just fish lining these, mm -hmm. these weak lines. And all you have to do is find them. Mm -hmm. And honestly, you know, a lot of times, I don't even have to use the electronics. I use my eyes. So this is a good thing for the people that don't have electronics on their, on their boats or their kayaks or whatever. My recommendation is you, you get to a spot, you point, head towards shore, and you just watch in the water. And where you see that weed line, stop. Mm -hmm. Back up about 10 feet and fish that weed line. You know right where it is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know... I didn't really have any electronics until late last year, beginning of this year. And I, I killed it here because I would just find the weed line. Yeah. It, 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 it's not as complicated as people make it. it. It's really, really not. And when you look at the, the Navionics uh, version, it's like, it, it, is it very shallow in places? Cause compared to Huntington, you can tell that there's not as many uh, topo lines. Is there a reason for that? Is it bad mapping or is it just a shallower lake? It's it is shallow and really when I when I look at that map I can see a lot of it was not done. It shows mm. some of the main channels there, but yeah, there's a lot that you know when you move north in that area that's just all blue. There's no typo lines there. Um, that's one of my right up in this this whole area there. Um, now I don't do you see those two two dots um, right there where you where your mouse is. Yeah. Uh, those are actually big chunky rocks that's rock formations right oh, there. oh wow okay now huh. the fish on the left hand on sorry on the right hand side south of that is just it's incredible hmm. it, it really is there's i haven't i really have not caught a single fish north of those rocks ever now is there a good like perch or bluegill population in this place tons of bluegill Tons of bluegill, lots of crappie that are in here. And um, yeah. And again, you know, people say there's there's not a whole lot of bait fish in there, but man, I've seen plenty. Mm -hmm. I've seen them just, you know, bigger than my bigger than my truck, just bait balls. And so and, and, and there's another guy that I talked to that has been fishing this since it was created. Wow. And he's it's his he's on Facebook. His name is Bass Hunter, and and Lake Mooney actually has a, a Lake Mooney fishing page just for this lake. And this guy is on there, and this guy just he just catches fish, man. Um, 
but he knows everything there is about this. Um, he actually used to drive through this place before it filled with water while they were building it. So it's crazy. Yeah. There's actually, you can actually go online and look at pictures of, of Lake Mooney and a guy actually took a, a drone out there and flew it around and you can see everything before it filled up. And this is the one, this is one where there were definitely bass ponds. There were several ponds in this area that uh, when they built this and they busted through those ponds, there was bass in those ponds. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a, it's really a fairly new reservoir. I think it's like maybe, I don't know, maybe 2014 it was open. Holy smokes. Okay. But yeah, it's really new. And you would think there wouldn't be that many fish in there, but there was these farm pond, these big farm ponds in there that had bass. So where do you think they went? They went mm -hmm. right into the lake. And I, you know, uh, last year, last year took a young, young gentleman fishing with me and he caught one. It was four pounds, 11 ounces. Wow. You know, I've caught some over five in here. I've seen fish seven, eight, nine pounds in here. Easy. Now, now, what is what is the Department of, of Wildlife Resources? What is the relationship with these places in the sense of, of their stocking programs? Um, I, I want to talk uh, at, at some point about that one like that that we discussed in passing about they stocked it and then it got hit really hard and now it's kind of down like. Like, are, are they constantly stocking these places? Is it just a one and done? Like, what's their relationship when it comes to rehabilitating the fishery? Well, I know in Lake Mooney, they put in grass carp um, just recently mm. to help with, the, to help with the, the weed problem, especially around the fleet, around the landing there. Um, and they actually, if you go to the Lake Mooney page on Facebook, they actually came out with a survey asking the local people what they wanted to see stocked in there. Um, not sure what the answer is going to be, but I think it's going to be a like a hybrid striper they're going to put in. So, you know, and there's walleye in here also. So if you want to go deep and fish walleye, you can do that in, well, in all of them. All mm -hmm. of them have walleye populations. Now I haven't seen one caught yet, but they're in there. Yeah, um, I, I don't understand the, the killing like using the grass carp and stuff. I that will baffle me to this day. Uh, yeah, I, you know, uh, the Lake of the Woods is the one that has the you need a special permit to fish here and everything. There are some huge grass carp in there, uh, 25, 30 pound grass carp. It's just unreal. Um, but it doesn't seem like they survive long. They're only they only last for a little while and then they die off. So I don't understand that either. Um, yeah, because like Lake Frederick, we had an issue where they overstocked the grass carp and it decimated the grass so badly there was like nothing left. Right. Um, and now it's just trying to come back. And again, it's you know my channel. I can say whatever I want. It's trying to find that balance that we keep trying to mess with the grass and like guys, grass has been there before we started to manage it. It's just something you deal with because it does make better fisheries. It's just like Lake Gunnersville. I mean, it has a ton of grass in it. Lake Fork, it has a ton of grass in it. You know, it's hard to fish, yeah, but it's d big deer need a forest to live in. You know, and, and it's the same thing here. So it's like trying to find that balance, and I think educate not just the anglers, but also the homeowners that like, you know, it, it's, it's not a weed. It's a, it's a aquatic vegetation and it's needed to clean the water and filter it. That's why Florida and up North Lake Champlain, that's why the water is so clear is because it helps filter it out. Um, but I'll, I'll get up yeah, my I soapbox mean, now. I, I really think, I really think it depends on the depth of the water at your body of water. Mm -hmm. I, I know I went up to, I went up to Maine uh, two years ago in in june and the the hydrilla in this place the most of the water was in the you know the deepest was maybe 15 feet and that stuff grew so much that it was it was very hard to fish you, the trolling motor just got fouled mm -hmm. constantly and this cove that we had to put into it was it was so inundated you just you couldn't fish it mm -hmm. 
um, because it was so much. But I think as long as you have deep water pockets and things like that, where that vegetation won't grow, I say let it grow. It it provides more oxygen. The fish have better cover and things like that. And yes, there will be places that you cannot fish because of the, the grass and hydrilla and everything growing up. So you pass that by and you find out where the edge of that is, mm -hmm. where it starts going into deep water and you fish that, or you find those holes in it and you fish them. You know, you, you have to adapt to the situation, honestly. Yeah. And, and I wish we would, we would adopt kind of like what New York state did where they use those big mowers versus dumping poison in there. Cause I know uh, there's a problem with like holiday where they, they put too much poison in it and, not, and that's up in like, uh, Winchester, Virginia, by the way. Um, but they dumped too much poison in it. Not only did it kill all the grass, you couldn't eat anything out of there because they overdid it with the poison. And it's like, that's, you know, if you don't like something in your lawn, you don't firebomb it. Like there is like a, I think we got to find a better balance of how to treat some of this stuff that's better for the ecosystem. Uh, Cause yeah, like these likes that have that balance of grass and stuff, that's where you're getting these 10 pounders and these like two pound crappie. And it, I think we're getting better, but definitely raising awareness to all this. And now getting off the, the environmental side of things, what are your favorite baits to throw here? Since it's a little bit more uh, grassy, a little bit more shallow, is it the same types? Or, or do you have other baits that you like to throw like a lipless bait well, this time of year? So this time of year, yeah, lipless. I've seen plenty of crayfish in here. Plenty. They're okay. all over the place. Because hmm. um, I actually took a little trip out there at night and had, uh, you know, flashlight attached to my head and looked at things and saw lots of crayfish so yeah that that red lipless anywhere that you can find these weed lines or any sort of structure that you can bump off of that's great here um i really like fishing this place after the spawn that that's when i find my most success is after the spawn because now they're just they're just sitting in places waiting to ambush things. Mm -hmm. So I, I like uh, hunting run right now. And I like Mooney a little bit later in the season. Now, this is where I went on Saturday that I got blown all over the place. And I, I, I couldn't even get to my normal places. But, you know, um, yeah, let's see. If you move south towards the dam. So you see this finger that goes up on the right-hand side. Yes. So I was all the way back in there. Oh, wow. All the way back in that cove that jets, that finger that goes up to the north. Okay. That's where I was. And I only caught two fish, but I caught them in there. Um, yes. Yeah, like, is this an old roadbed that right here? It looks like. There are some. Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. There are a few road beds in here. If you zoom out, you see that one road that's more defined on the yeah. left. It actually goes all the way down towards the water. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that there's something on the other side also. Huh. Yeah, this but is yeah, a there, really cool place. There's road beds in here. There's all kinds of stuff. All kinds of underwater structure that you can find. You see, there's, there's that hump right there, right off the dam. And... um that's that's pretty well defined there. What what is the deepest part of this, generally speaking? True, I've seen water, uh, eighty feet. Wow. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's not super shallow then. Okay. No, no, it's not. There are a lot of really deep holes. Um, now, in both of these places, do they have any tournaments that are allowed to go out of there? Or electric yeah. motor only kayak? Yep. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen one out of out of Mooney. They, they also call this Rocky Pen. Rocky Pen, so, okay. So I have not seen a tournament out of there, but I've seen them out of uh, Hunting Run and Nye Reservoir. There's also, um, <laughs> what's it? Uh, not Lake Anna. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Uh, give me a second and I'll tell you. Yeah. I'll get nine up. Another one. It is. I'm actually pulling up my map now so I can see what I'm doing. 
It is. Man, I wish I could think of the name of this. It's right along the Rappahannock. That's nice. And it's actually run by the city of Fredericksburg. Oh, really? Not uh, Mott's Run. Mott's Run? Okay. Yeah. See if you can find Mott's Run. Now, that is a... Uh, that's a very recreational place. So it's city of Fredericksburg. That's right. um, nine. We'll get there. That's nine. It, no, it's a little north of that. Uh, there it is. Yeah. So that runs. I you see the right Rappahannock. Oh, wow. Right on the side of Rappahannock. And it's actually, the road is kind of split right there. It's, it's one road, but if you take a left, you go to, you go into the Moss Run Reservoir. If you take a right, you can actually put in uh, in the Rappahannock if you got a canoe or kayak. Hmm. So, so how, how big is this place? Like a couple of acres? Um, I'm not sure exactly how big that is. It's the smallest of the, of the three we've looked at, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Um. It looks like it'll be way easier to deal with electric motor only and get from place to place, but probably it gets way more pressure. I'm assuming it does uh, a lot more, a lot more um, recreation there. I will tell you how big it is here in a second. Cause I'm, that doesn't help. I'm jumping on here, looking at things. Um, yeah, guys, 100, like, 160 acres, 160 acres. Okay. So guys, that's smaller than Lake Frederick up in Winchester, Virginia, probably the same size as Lake holiday. So yeah, a little bit smaller, but probably a lot, a lot easier to fish the whole thing if you want to in a day. Yeah, yeah, you can you can really fish this all day long. Now I haven't been there in a long time, um, only because it's so recreational. Mm -hmm. and also, it's a different permit than Nye Reservoir and Mott's Run. So if you want to put in there, there's a ramp fee, there's a gate. It's only open certain times. Again. Um, so you either get it, you either pay the one-time fee to put in for a day or you get it for the season. And I'd rather spend my time on, on uh, hunting run and, and um, Nye reservoir than I would, would here. So but, but before, before we get to Nye, um, what are your thoughts on the idea of having these like restrictions? I mean, more of like what, like six months off and then only two or three days a week on, like, is that, Good, bad, indifferent? Um, I, I actually think it's pretty good, especially for the ones here in Spotsylvania County, because there's a couple reasons. One is by the time the fall hits, like last year, that water had been drained down in that reservoir so much mm. that it, it was getting difficult to even put in the fish. And a lot of the structure that you fished in the spring and early summer was completely out of the water so i think taking that break for that five months of no fishing keeping it closed i kind of like that idea in, in the reservoirs in spotsylvania county because they drain the water and you gotta wait for it to get filled back up and and i i i didn't enjoy it as much when that water level was down so much mm -hmm. it wasn't as fun um it was hard to get around and hard to get into all your spots that you were used to. Now, granted, you could you could mark structure like crazy for in the spring because yeah. it was all in the water. But um, yeah, so two of them, two of them are closed at certain times in the year. The ones in Stafford County are open all year. Okay. Um, so yeah, and, and that's that's. Lake Mooney and Abel Lake. You can fish them all year. Um, and a lot of people do like to go in there and fish, fish in the wintertime and go deep. Um, Cause they, I, yeah, they, that's they, weird to me. Like, like I, I'm okay. I, I, I can get behind the idea of like, here's a couple months off. It's the idea of like, it's only open a Thursday or a Saturday or Friday. It's like, I feel like that's going to really, I, I, I see one side of it. Like it does decrease pressure through the week, but on the flip side, it's going to be a madhouse on the days that it's actually open to go there. So it's like, would you even want to go there then at that point? Well, 
so one of the good things that they do is Nye Reservoir is open Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Hmm. Hunting Run is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So there's no fishing at all on Wednesday, but you can hit one of the two. And they're, you know, 10 minutes from each other. So really the only day that you don't want to come and fish down here is Wednesday. (laughs) (laughs) So interesting. I mean, I guess it keeps the fishing good, though. It it is. Uh, I mean, I have a blast. I catch plenty of fish. I do my thing. You know, um, all right. Yeah. So now the, the legend. All right. So I guess the last one on our on our journey today is, and I've heard of this one. I've I've heard of its rumors of Nye. So so what is the deal with with this place? What what's dammed <laughs> up there? What is it like? So I'll tell you. Um, a lot of people like to call this no fish Nye. No fish Nye. Um, it is the one thing about this compared to the other ones is. There are lily pads in here. Oh. So in the summer, the lily pads start growing. You can have a blast with top water. Now, I have seen nice size ones caught out of here. I haven't caught anything over three pounds. Not out of here. But I've seen six and seven pounders pulled out of here. Do you think it has to do with... um... The, the genetics does it have to do with like is there overpopulation? I mean, what what do you think the deal is? I <laughs> I really don't know because it, it's funny because you can go in here on a beautiful day and and one day you go in here and you can catch thirty bass. You can go out in the exact same conditions the next day and catch two. The difference is the thirty bass you caught on the first day are all one one and a half pounders Mm -hmm. the next day you're going to catch two or three three pounders i have yet to figure it out um and and what's the other thing and i've i've actually asked people this on you know other live shows and things like that so you have nine and you have hunting run they're very close they're the you know, the structure is very similar. This has a lot more longer fingers to it and things like that. They both have main lake channels. I'll use a bait in Hunting Run, and I'll go to use it in Nye Reservoir and not get a nibble, hmm. not nothing. Sometimes it is completely, uh, and I, I fish these two reservoirs in the same day. Hmm. I went to Hunting Run earlier in the morning, and I used a particular color trick worm, and I had a blast. I I drive over here to Nye Reservoir. I put in here. I go to use the same bait, and not a thing. That's weird. I had to switch up completely. But yeah, there are some nice fish in here. You just have to find them. Besides the lily pads, any other? Is there any hydrilla in there? Anything like that? Oh, yeah, there's hydrilla. There's um. What's really weird is. There are bubbles that constantly run through this entire place where I guess it's something under the water for the reservoir. It's like Hmm. a pipe. And these bubbles run through the entire main lake channel. Really? Through it. Yeah. That's weird. It's really crazy. But um, yeah, a lot of people like fishing that northern bank. I like hitting the the southern coves and things like that. Um, Any shad? Yeah. Yep. Shad, bluegill, crappie, pickerel. They're all in here. Um, I, I bet this one has massive crappie in it. Yes. Yeah. It, it's a lot of times um, if you're fishing in lily pads, if you don't get a bash, you're getting a big crappie. Well, what's the biggest crappie you've seen out of these three lakes? Or, or, or that This you know one of? here. This one here. I There's there's two pounders in here. Easy. Holy God, that's Easy. insane. Yeah. I've, I've caught some really big crappie in here that I was like, I couldn't believe how big it was. You know, I, caught, I caught a 28-inch pickerel out of this place. Wow. That's a freaking good size one. Yeah, that's a slime rocket right there. And, and none of these places, they stock consistently with bass at all? No. No, I'll tell you what. My, my best lure in this place is a Ned Rig. Mm-hmm. 
absolute best. Huh. Um, let me see if looking at this map, if we move to the left, um, up, up, upstream. Yeah. See where that little, uh, move your cursor a little to the North, just your cursor. See that Island right there. Yeah. So that whole area, I don't know what the deal is there, but in the summertime, the bass just love crashing the shad up against the shore there. Hmm. And it's pretty shallow. I'm talking two feet in this area. And I have had an absolute blast throwing a Ned rig in there. And they, they just, if you want to catch quantities like that, go up into these areas where it's shallow, when it gets a little warmer, when you're in the 70s for water temperature, you get up in there and you toss a Ned rig around. You're just going to have a blast. You're going to catch a lot of fish, and you might catch some really nice ones. Mm -hmm. um, I I love a Ned rig in here, dude. That, it, this water looks so good, and this what's so cool is when you have these fisheries together, and each one's different. Each one fishes different, and to me, that's just I don't know. That's what makes it fun when you think maybe you can tie on the same bait and it works everywhere, and you realize that these are different ecosystems completely, and the fish just behave so much. It's just so unique to me. Yeah, it's. It is a challenge. I mean, every time I go, I, I really have to. I really have to work um, to figure out how you know what I'm going to do and 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 what baits I'm going to throw. I mean, right off of the landing there, which you're showing the landing, and that's it's gravel. There isn't a whole lot of whole lot of concrete there, so this is primarily. You know, the smaller boats, the kayaks go out in here, um, John boats, things like that. But, you know, you don't see bass boats in here running their trolling motors with the, with their, with their, uh, mo gas engine up, you know? Mm. Um, that's a good question. So if you do have a gas motor engine on your boat, can you just lift it up and still use your boat or is that not even allowed? Nope. You can do that. Okay. You can you can have your full size bass boat in there. Just keep the keep the motor out of the water, and you can't use it even to load and unload. Oh, okay. There's that's good no know. gas motor whatsoever. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know then too. And, and then, how much does it cost in general? Because you said there's there's a yearly pass. Do you have to have a yearly pass, or can you just buy a one time you pass? Buy, you can just buy one. Um, it it's pretty cheap. Okay. It, it's like maybe five bucks. Okay. Uh, cool. But my yearly pass, being that I'm a resident, uh, a resident yearly pass cost me 25 bucks, and I can put in as much as I want. So gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That that works out pretty good, you know. Um, yeah, I, I just there's so many opportunities to fish around here. I, I tell you what, go to the Rappahannock, and and I want you to zoom in on on my Rappahannock smallmouth stuff. Oh, that's the Potomac. That's, oh, wait. that's old Potomac. All right, let's see. There's so many. These dots are confusing. There it is. All right, there's the 95 bridge. Where do you want to go? You want to go upriver or down? Zoom right in on that 95 bridge. That's a great place to start. So if you see that. Oh, man. You can see all the, the rocks and pockets and everything in this. It's just incredible. Um. I did notice one thing when they were doing the bridge, and this was last year, um, it caused an algae bloom of that, uh, it's like, what do they call it? Like a, it's like a a witch, witch hair algae or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's super long and stringy, but it was all south of the 95 bridge. So I think whatever they did there caused something to an algae bloom there. Yeah, like when when um they were doing construction, I don't know what year it is, uh, on the Wilson Bridge, it was so weird that when they started doing digging, there was a grass kill up there. So I don't know what that means. I don't know what we unearth when we dig that creates that issue in the ecosystem, but it is weird that it seems like when bridges get a lot of work done, it does change things. Yes. It does. Um but nor, you know, as you scroll north of the 95 bridge, so uh, up, you know, up river, yeah, upstream. If you just look at all of this stuff in there, 
you wow. know, there, there's places where it's real slow pockets and, and, and things like that. But, you know, now if you zoom in right there at Mott's run. Oh, wow. See, now there's an area to put in right there and you can put in canoes and stuff there. Now, a lot of people zoom back out again. And I'll show you one other thing. Continue moving upstream. And it's, this is really, keep going. You got a little ways to go. There's, um, there's not a lot of like, like, so on the Potomac and the Shenandoah, like right, right now, because of like Loudoun County and stuff, like there's a, sh there's a shit ton of houses like on the Shenandoah now. I'm surprised at the buffer they still have there. Cause it looks very not, not touched by man. Right. Huh. It, it really isn't. Um, there's the, what they call the confluence. So yeah, there's a, I mean, that's all private property. You can't even put in there. Oh, wow. There are specific public landings that you can put in. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So did you want me to still keep going up? Yeah. And right here, what am I looking for? So you're going to look for where the Rapidan and the Rappahannock come together. Okay. There we go. There we go. Right, right in there. Right. Yeah. There you go. See this area? Yeah. We call that the confluence okay. or convergence, whatever. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Incredible smallmouth bass fishing. How do you get, like, is there a launch ramp nearby that you can use? Yeah. There's one a little bit further up in the Rapidan. Okay. Um, the, I think it's called Eli's Ford. Um, there's, there's a few places that you can put in there. That is very rural. Wow. Yeah. Dude, but that, it's that a yeah. Two day trip from there all the way down to Fredericksburg. And it's very rocky too. Like the Shenandoah River, uh, for an example, is is very, very, very. I, we call it lazy. Um, there's a few riffles, but most of it is it's very slow moving. The Potomac, it, it can have its rocky parts, but this thing is very, very shallow. Yeah, there's there's lots of you know pools and riffles and everything else in that place. It's just, it's incredible. Now, uh, I guess the last thing before before we let you go here is like, where when does it become title? I guess. Oh. <laughs> Not for a long ways down. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because we're uh, we're gonna have to have you on again uh, before I come down just to just talk purely just Rappahannock fishing, Rappahannock River fishing when that gets going here. But um, no, I mean, now, there's, is a, there... there's a there's well, if you look up at the top of this page here, you see that little falls. Yes. All right. So that's an area where you can put in. You'll see it. It's just kind of a little bit to the north there. Yeah. See right in there? You can actually put in right there. there. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And uh, that's that's all largemouth. All up really? There. Largemouth, snakehead, um, the yellow perch run up through there. So there, there's, there's plenty of places to fish on the Rappahannock that are just incredible. Yeah, that that's my bucket list. We're doing that this. I'm doing it sometime this year. I really want to go fish. It, it, worst case scenario, at least the Rappahannock for all the stuff that I've heard about it, and that it is a hidden gem that no one ever talks about. We talk about the James of the Potomac, but no one ever ever really talks about the Rappahannock River at all. Nope. And a lot of people fish there. Hicks Landing is another one. I fished out of there, and that's incredible. Uh, directly across from the landing, someone that has a kayak will have a blast. Now, that is a little bit affected by the tide as you move further down. Um, and there's a little place called Hicks Landing that you can put in. Okay. There's a little store, and they have a drop box, and you put your you put your five bucks in there to launch a boat from their landing. Um, and, yeah, it's it's great. You know, there's plenty of places there. Now, there are docks and and things along the, the Rappahannock as, you're, as you move further downstream that you can fish. Okay. And there's other pockets that just go deep and there's, you know, almost like a swamp land in there. But when the tide is up, mm -hmm. fish move back into that stuff and you can have a blast. Yep. 
Well, good stuff. M Marty, thank you so much for coming on and really just highlighting some of these other places to fish that I don't think a lot of people up here really know about. Uh, wh where can people follow you? Uh, I have, you can follow me on Facebook. Just look for Ripping Lips with Marty Lawson. Uh, I'm on Facebook. You can follow me there. And then you can also follow me on my YouTube channel, Ripping Lips with Marty Lawson. I got a few videos posted there. I'm getting ready to post an uh, uh, interview that I did with a couple of brothers that make their own uh, hand-painted baits, which is just amazing. Um, I've, I've done a couple shows where I show things. But, um, yeah, my YouTube channel, I'm going to focus on, on local bait makers and tackle, tackle builders and rod makers, all of that. Uh, that's what I'm going to focus mostly on my channel. Fantastic. And then, sir, thank you again for coming on, guys. Please give him a follow. Please follow his content. Um, it really helps with the algorithm. If you like this, share it to some friends. The, the more this grows, the more people I can have on to bring awareness to all of the, the bait makers, the local sticks, and all the cool hidden gems that are in this, in this area that we call the DMV. Um, you know, again, guys, give me a like. Give him a like, and we'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. Bye. Sweet.